and we'll launch RS Logix 500 English. And then you're going to want to go File, New. Then you have to select the processor we're working with, which is a Micrologix 1000. We have all those other processors. This software is compatible or could be used with all those different PCs. That's what it is. So you have a selection. Okay. So we started a new project that's untitled. I could go ahead here and start programming if I want to. Now I could I could hit this. This will give me a new room. Okay. I could do it you know a bunch of times if I want. Alright, and then I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna drop a condition here. Okay. Then I gotta give it an address, right? So I wanna wire it to the first input that's available here. So I'm gonna come here. If I didn't know how to address, you could always go to your data table. Remember I said those ones and zeros, those little bit boxes? They're all here. Okay? So that's zero, one, respectively to your conditions here. Okay? So I'll come here and say, oh, um, I, need to, I need to address my bit I colon zero slash zero. Okay. All right, now I want to make it um, control and output to energize. So I'm going to come up here, grab one, drop it down. And I'm going to give it an address of O colon zero slash zero. Okay, okay we're good. Now I gotta come back and get rid of these E's because that means it's an edit mode, okay? And right now my project is like that. I could do this to make it bigger, but the easiest way to do it is just go up here to window, arrange, default project, and it makes it nice and big so we can see everything that's going on, okay? So I'm gonna come back here. I could hit the green check mark. I could come back here, right click. I usually right click and verify. And it's telling me, hey, you're good to go. Um, there's no errors that populated. Sometimes if it didn't like something, it's gonna populate an error and tell you, you know, something in, is invalid here. Um, so now I got to download this to the controller because I'm offline right now. I'm developing a project. No different than if you were at home writing the logic. You're offline, we're not connected to anything. So what is the program that I'm gonna launch here? RS Links, okay? I have a little icon down here. It's a little, looks like a chain thing. I'm going to come back here, all programs. I'm going to look for Rockwell software, and I'm going to launch RS Links. Okay. So the first step here is I could come up here and I could hit this configure drivers. That'll get me there. There's a lot of different ways to get to the screen, but I'm going to go communications, configure drivers, and I have a couple other drivers configured. I'm just going to wipe those out, delete them. It shouldn't affect anything, but these are for emulators. We're not using that. And I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna add a driver. So depending on the, this, these selections here are basically gonna say, how are you going to communicate with your PLC processor, okay? We're gonna communicate here with the serial connection here. So I gotta pick an RS-232 DF1 device, okay? So I'm gonna select and add new, and I'm just gonna default that. That's Alan Bradley underscore DF1, hit okay. And then when I populate this menu, COM port, COM1. Now, if you look on the back of the PC, there's a little connector. It's a nine pin connector, okay? That is gonna be COM port one. If we had another COM port, sometimes they're labeled A and B, that would be COM2. But in this case, it's gonna be COM1, and I'm gonna hit auto configure. Okay, auto configure, configuration successful. So basically I said, go ahead and go look for a PLC processor. It went out, it found it, and it said it was successful. So I could go in now and I could download this program to the processor if I wanted to. Another step I could do is I could come back here to RSU and you see that DF1 driver? That exists now because I added it. Before, when I didn't have that driver there, that was not there. So that's when I say I configured my driver, okay? So now if I opened up my DF1, you're gonna say, oh, here's your workstation, which is this here. And hey, there's a Micrologix 1000. It knows there's a Micrologix 1000 here. Okay? So that means, hey, we're talking. When I say we're talking, that means we're communicating. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here. I'll minimize this. 
case I want to go back. In case there's problems I can't download, I can just bring it back up and try to go communications or try to do auto configure all over again. And this, this auto configuration, it's in your lab manual at the beginning, in case you need that procedure. So I'm going to come up here. There's different ways you can do it. There's a shortcut method that's just file download. Now, I don't like that method because it's not consistent. Because you see right now, the driver, it says unknown. So it's going to have a problem if you try to do it that way. Obviously, you could come into the channel configuration. Controller properties, controller communications, and select the driver that you want to use. Then that little shortcut's going to work fine, okay? But this is the way I think you guys should get in practice of doing it. Do it this way, communication system comms. This way you know exactly what you're downloading to. You're saying, I'm gonna download DF1 to this processor and hit download. Because if you were using maybe an ethernet driver, you could have maybe 20 or 30 different PLCs that are communicating with the software. And I've seen guys download the wrong program to the wrong PLC. So this way we know, hey, I'm gonna download to this MicroLogic 1000. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna go download. So if there's multiple wow. MicroLogic's how do you know which one it is? Well, see, that's the thing. If you had a project, right? The project is going to have the IP address. We're talking about Ethernet of the particular pro processor you want to download to, right? So you have to be careful and know that you're going to download to the right processor that has that IP, okay? In this case here, it's just a serial communication, but it's good to get in the habit of doing this because you know, um, you know exactly what you're doing. So this guy, since I never gave it a name or anything, it's going to prompt me with something. So I'm just going to go name and test. And then it's going to give me download program. It's going to say MicroLogix 1000. Are you sure you want to proceed with the download? Yes. And they give you, you know, a warning. Current settings do not match settings because, you know, this could be a default processor. Who knows? Okay, yes. The processor is in a remote run. Processor must be switched to program. Uh, remote program continue. Yes. So it's just telling you that if you do this and you're running, you're going to stop running while this is downloading. It's going to take it out of run and basically put it in program mode. When it's in program mode, the PLC is not scanning anymore. He stopped scanning, okay? So I'm gonna go yes. You see the run light went out. Change it back to remote run. Do, now you see the run light came on, so he's scanning now. See, I'm still, I, I haven't even went online yet, but I'm in run mode, he's scanning. This is a, and examine on there. I turn my switch on, go look for a one, right? He sees it. You don't see it now because I'm offline, but my output is turned off. Now, if I say go ahead and go online, there's my condition. There's my logic. Off, right? Switch is off. Okay, now if I wanted to see my data table, I could click on this. That's the bit that's associated with that, right? If I click this corner, I can lock it on top so it stays there and I can click it. It's not going to disappear. And I can come back here. Go look for a one. He is. It's true. Output is energized. My output is physically on here. Turning on something out in the field. I can come look at my output image table. Move that there. There's my one. I can lock it on top. Like that. Step number one, determine the status of the input devices. Step number two, read and solve the ladder logic. Step number three, update my output devices, right? Then he's gonna do step number four, his communications, housekeeping, and all the fun starts over again. All right? So 